I think Jonathan Wirth in his session yesterday was saying, you know, as uh, educators who are in the, you know, purveying information, we're going head to head with the internet for young people's attention. So good luck with that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sort of curious, what about these programs kept you involved, given everything else and, you know, all of your schoolwork and other interests that you have? I don't know if somebody wants to jump in on that question. Oh, I can go. Yeah. Uh, so for me, a big part of that was the mentors. So the director of our clubhouse, um, Ms. LaVersa Sullivan, she really made sure she connected with everybody who walked through the door. Um, she also made sure that the volunteers there connected with everyone who walked through the door. Um, I remember one day I was sitting down and I didn't really like programming, I just liked taking pictures and using a program called Goo to make the pictures look funny. Um, I was sitting there on Goo and Miss LaVersa came in with a bunch of computers and she said, who wants to help take, a, uh, take apart the computers? And I didn't say anything, I just kept playing and she's like, Jaleesa, come back here. And if Miss LaVersa told you to do something, you had to do it. So I did it and there was only a few of us girls who went back there and then um, we ended up taking a break and she said, you know, if you're really not interested, you can go back in there. And I stayed and by the end I realized, oh, I'm the only girl in here. And so, um, you know, Miss LaVersa, she really just pushed me because she knew that I was capable of more than what I did. In school, it was easy for me to just do the minimal and still get an A, but Miss LaVersa, she knew that I was capable of doing way more than that. And so then um, I would just start finding ways to um, bring my schoolwork into the clubhouse. I made an interactive CD-ROM about Romeo and Juliet because I hated the project that my English teacher gave me. And so um, just having those mentors there to push me and tell me that I could do more, it really kept me in the program. Mm, that's a great story. So I think we'll, we all agree that these are amazing young women and we'd all like to take credit for how awesome they are. Uh, my next question is, so how much credit do these programs really get for how awesome you are? I mean, what, what influence do you think it, you know, the participation in this program uh, that you were involved in had and, you know, the way you learned in your future and what, what you have planned for your future? Um, the Computer Clubhouse had a huge impact on um, where I am today. Um, through the Clubhouse, I was able to go to different conferences and do presentations. And it'd be funny because it'd be like me and my sister and other people at the Clubhouse and we're like the only kids and there's just a bunch of old white men presenting <laughs> and then there's us. And we're like, hi, you know, this is what we're working on. Um, I, through the Clubhouse, I was able to get two high school internships at Microsoft. I was the only person from Tacoma. I would wake up at 4.30 in the morning, every day in the summer, to take three buses up to Microsoft and then come back. So I had no life. I would wake up early, go to sleep early. But um, it was because of the clubhouse. Um, our director took us to their um, Blacks at Microsoft Student Minority Day. Um, I ended up winning second place in an essay contest. I won a new computer for my house. Um, I was so excited because the computer that we had was really slow and I didn't like to use it. But um, even um, my choice of school, so I went to the University of Washington and originally I thought I wanted to do computer science because um, I had done a lot of programming at the computer clubhouse. But I got there and I was like, this is boring. Um, we, did, we barely even, we didn't even touch a computer in the classroom. Um, we were writing things on paper and I was like, this is really boring. But because of my participation in the computer clubhouse, I knew that um, I wanted to do engineering, but I wanted to be interactive. And so I studied human-centered design and engineering and specifically human, human computer interactions. And then once I graduated, I didn't want to go work at Microsoft or Google or anything. Um, I did AmeriCorps. Um, and I went back to Tacoma and I did AmeriCorps. And that's because I knew that I still wanted to be connected to my community. And so after AmeriCorps, um, I went back to the computer clubhouse, this time as the coordinator. Um, and you know, had I not participated in the computer clubhouse, there's no way that I um, would even have this perspective. You know, I might have, uh, well actually, when I first started the computer clubhouse, I just knew that I wanted to be a hairdresser. And that's not what I do now. Um, and actually, in the fall, I'll be returning to the University of Washington to get my master's degree. And um, 
so yeah, the computer clubhouse had a big effect on my decisions. Wow, that's pretty powerful. Um, you've spoken about a little bit, but what is it about the experiences early on that um, enabled you to persist probably in oftentimes when you were in classes in college or in high school where, um, where you were probably the only one, one of few uh, women? So, um, sorry, I'm trying to get my thoughts together. Um, so when I was at the University of Washington, there were a lot of times when um, I was one of few women or people of color in my classes. But um, it was because of my early years at the computer clubhouse. I started when I was in the seventh grade. Um, the first thing that I programmed was an interactive CD-ROM uh, for Black History Month, and it was called What If There Were No Black People? And so um, there's like a play about it, and I took the play and I, um, somebody helped me make the characters, and I programmed it in Macromedia Director using Lingo. And to me, that was just so much fun, and I was able to show my mom. I was able to, you know, show people what I did. And then, like I said, when I was in the ninth grade, we had to read Romeo and Juliet, and we were supposed to write a paper about it, and I went to my English teacher and said, can I do something else? So I made an interactive CD-ROM about that. And so um, just me being able to bring writing or design assignments to life, um, it really just motivated me to keep going. And so once I got to college, um, the computer science classes, they were really boring. And, but I knew that from my experience with the computer clubhouse that I could do more. I could bring my ideas to life. So I didn't get discouraged. I would um, go back to the clubhouse where I would call Miss LaVersa sometimes, and I would just tell her, this is boring. I don't know how you did it. But you know, she would just tell me, just keep going, because this is what you like to do. And so um, now I'm able to tell kids at the clubhouse, you know, like I was exactly where you are. And I went to the University of Washington, who has a great computer science program. Um, has a great college of engineering, and I was able to do this, even if I was the only one sometimes, but if you guys do this and teach your friends how to do it, you guys can go, and you don't have to be the only one, and you can change the program. Uh, just to go a little bit off uh, what she said about um, changing you know, the stigma behind the word geek, um, that's really important. The students that I work with now, um, you know, I, I see them every day. They live across the street. A lot of them live across the street, live in the neighborhood. They walk over there. But, you know, when they're at the clubhouse, that's a safe place for them to be able to work on whatever it is that they want to. Um, when I first started, there was um, one kid that I would have to beg to work on a project. I would have to, you know, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And you're like, oh, no, I don't want to. Um, I'm actually going to be taking him to the Teen Summit this year. Um, he has really stepped up as a leader. You know, before, um, you know, he would tell me, oh, I got in a fight today, or I did this, or I did that, and he would be proud of that. Now what he's proud of is, oh, look, I fixed something in the music studio, or I just showed somebody how to make a beat. Um, you know, his brother was playing with uh, some of the Lego robotics, and he was like, do you know how to program it? And he said, no. He goes, you want to learn? He said, no. He's like, why not? And you know, he's like, no, we're gonna go learn this now. And so, you know, he's really stepped up as a leader, but you know, the second somebody says, oh, you're a geek, then he'll immediately shut down and be like, no, I'm not. You know, I don't wanna be here type thing. And so um, just really watching the way that we um, approach it, um, making it fun and relevant to the students will really engage them in the STEM activities um, that goes for the girls and the boys. But just, you know, making sure that we're making it centered around them and not what, you know, the schools are telling them, oh, this is STEM, this is what you should be doing, but making sure that we engage them in what they're doing already in their everyday lives. Ooh, I think that's a fantastic and inspiring note to end on.